Hello, everybody, and we're here. Welcome back to my channel. And today I will be doing my review of Doctor Who Twice Upon a Time. This year is Doctor Who Christmas Special, Peter Capaldi's final episode uh, on the show, uh, or at least final episode on the show as the Doctor. That may not even be accurate for future episodes. Anyway, point being, review Twice Upon a Time, my last video of the year. Um, let's, uh, so uh, to do this review here with me today, I have Jacob, my brother. Hello. Uh, this will be a spoiler a spoiler review before we go into spoilers. Um, just wanted to give a quick rating. I say 7 out of 10. I believe you agree with me, yes. correct? Okay. 7 out of 10, good episode, um, just as a general, just kind of blanket statement. So let's get right into this. We'll be bringing this down into certain categories, certain uh, characters, and other things that I want to talk about. So, starting off with our first topic here, and again, this is a spoiler review, we have the 12th Doctor. How did you feel about Peter Capaldi in this episode? It was a good performance, I would say. It Not necessarily outstanding, because uh, we, we were discussing this, and you said to me it was kind of a, of, of, of a gen generic Capaldi performance. Yeah, it was It was certainly like a, a by-and-by kind of Not that Capaldi that's bad, because I think Capaldi generally acts well. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was, he was like, consistent with the way that he acted in Series 10, which, good. I liked him mm, in Series yeah. 10. And this um, seemed in line with everything that's that's what, that I pictured yeah. would happen. For my biggest complaint being uh, the 12th Doctor being a really inconsistent Doctor, it was really only true for Series 9 and um, occasionally in Series 8 and 10. So, But very, um, very occasionally. His performance in this was very good. Um, you know, he stuck true to the kind of Doctor that he was, I felt. Um, and uh, and Moffat wrote him well. I yeah. Just, I, just, I just liked him. Nothing so. was too terribly out of place. Nothing seemed wrong. Yeah. Like, point being, like, Capaldi himself didn't do anything this episode that made me have, like, a similar reaction to, like, Tennant in The End of Time or Smith in Time of the Doctor. Yeah. You know? He wasn't too self-indulgent, and if anything, the self-indulging in this episode came from the writing, which we'll get into later. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, just... I, I enjoyed him. I, I didn't think he was too bad. No, I enjoyed him quite a lot. Um, uh, I guess we'll say that part for later. So, any other thoughts on Capaldi in this episode? Outside of what I'm thinking, you're thinking? The the end. Yeah, the yeah, end. Yeah, we'll talk uh, about the end later. Um, outside of that, not really. Yeah, okay. So, um... Alright, so this is kind of coincide with this topic. Uh, now let's talk about the first Doctor in this, as portrayed by David Bradley, who I thought was just amazing. I don't know why he was credited last. All right. I, I was so confused. Uh, we, we, uh, we watched this together the first time we watched this, and we, the credits started rolling at the beginning. Yeah, your opening title sequence. It, it went Peter Capaldi, I think Pearl Mackey yeah, then, next. Mark Gatiss, and David Bradley. We kept, like, freaking out, because we thought that, like David Bradley was really going to get pushed to the side, but... He was in it far more yeah, than, it was, uh, than Mackie and Gatiss. Um, it's, in my opinion, as much his journey, the first Doctor's journey, as it is the twelfth Doctor's journey. Yeah, but at the same time, it didn't take away from the fact that this was Capaldi's regeneration episode. Mm -hmm. um, and I also like the fact that regeneration was just kind of the whole topic of this episode. I liked that this episode was an epilogue. It right. wasn't, like, an actual adventure, I felt. No. It, the... And nothing, nothing straight away. Everything went back to death. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. There, there was a consistent. It. Yeah, there was a consistent theme. This episode acted as more of an epilogue for both the twelfth Doctor and the first Doctor, and there was a consistent theme in it. Right. I, I, I like that. I like that a lot. Now, obviously, we all agree David Bradley is amazing as the first Doctor. Nobody's doubting that. He right. captures the essence of William Hartnell's Doctor. Right. To a T. As t as much as we can get to yeah. t anymore. Now, now, a big topic that's been that I've been encountering a lot, especially amongst um, a certain my group of friends, is especially like first Doctor fans, is that the first Doctor is sexist in this. Now, he's you could look back at any first Doctor episode; he's never sexist. No, but they do it in this in this story. So. What I and, and then we can always go back and forth as to which jokes are sexist. And yeah. Now, yeah. I want, I'm making yeah. this like, kind of like its own topic. Yeah, no, so, that's, that's a good idea. Okay, so the sexist jokes kind of start, and you see where they're going with it, and they kind of land to start. It kind of works, and it it's works more as a showing the differences between the 12th and 1st Doctors, mm -hmm. but not exactly true to the 1st Doctor's character. At the same time, though, 
the way Bradley delivered those lines, I could strangely believe Hartnell saying them. Right. And I don't necessarily think that the first Doctor himself would have been sexist as the show could have put, as the show kind of pushed, that he might have been. Yeah. I think if that ever happened, like, because, you know, it's all, it was all real in the Doctor Who universe, then it would have been the in-between stuff. The stuff that you don't see on the show. Yeah. If it ever happened. Yeah. But I, I didn't like the fact that, that they did it overall, but at the same time, it wasn't overbearing either. I feel no. like it wasn't overdone. Like, it didn't distract and, from the fact that Bradley was amazing. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie, like... I laughed at one of the jokes. A specific, it was it was the one that like they got a reaction from uh, from you and me together, uh -huh. where uh, it's, it's something along the lines of like all women are made of glass or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. And then and then even and the then, captain. And then, yeah, and then, and then Mar one. Margatus laughs, and I was like, okay, that it's funny because of the reaction to it. The joke itself wasn't funny, but the way they played it, right? And then the way both of them reacted, and then. Uh, Pearl Mackey and Peter Capaldi, the way they reacted was a nice contrast to how each had their own view set from where yeah. they come from. Now, I do take issue with one of the topics, and I expressed this to you already, with one of the topics that they kept going back to with the sexist jokes was cleaning the TARDIS. They cleaning did, the TARDIS. The first one, I, he mentioned Polly. He's like, oh, well, Polly is not around to clean anymore. Like, oh, God, why? That one was too far. And then they did it again, him talking to Bill. Why? Well, yeah. Just... I see no point to it. Now, you could take it in the direction of, okay, it's more of a racial thing because the first Doctor was a, was a bit more racist than... I mean, he was never sexist, but he was certainly, like, you know, a bit more... I don't want to say playfully racist, but, you know, like, lightly. Yeah. Um, and that's more of a reflection of William Hartnell. But you could take it in that direction, but it clearly wasn't written in that it way. Wasn't, it wasn't written that way, but that's the way I took jokes more directed at bill yeah the ones toward bill uh, Where, the smack bottom joke was was just weird was weird but not uh, yeah entirely it, out of place yeah i would say just like the the jokes took me out of it but it didn't change the fact that like i still love david bradley as the first doctor right. in this. it's not even like i can't see that being a said thing mm -hmm. as you've said earlier yeah but I don't know. At the same time, they they just didn't land half the time. Yeah. So that was a big part of what uh what affected my opinion on David Bradley in this. But still, um, he was great. Mm -hmm. So now our next topic we have, and I, I've expanded upon this topic from when I originally wrote this list. I have Bill and other companions. So Bill is the the selling point, obviously. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, Clara makes a cameo and Nardole makes a cameo. So, let's talk about Bill first. Bill, I found to be completely pointless in this. Yeah, I didn't think Bill was needed. Yeah. Bill Especially when you get the, the, the twist. <laughs> the quote-unquote twist. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just like, I don't... I kind of got, like, mad each time Bill was there. Because Bill clearly did not need to be in this episode. No, definitely didn't need to be in this episode. Yeah. Like, I just... I didn't get anything from her. And she didn't add anything. Even, um... And I think Bill only exists in the state that she does in the story um, to serve the ending point. Yeah, with the cameos. Yeah, which, the cameos. Which, which let's talk about, actually. Um, Clara appeared. I was okay with it. I was... When I was, it I su happened. I After surprisingly happened. didn't mind. I yeah. surprisingly did not mind it. I do not like Clara as a character, but the fact that she appeared here, I was... I. I just didn't really care. And here's the funny thing. She was less real than Bill. Yeah, exactly. They at least didn't like try to play with it in that way. So, I hate to say it, but I enjoyed Clara more than I liked Bill in she was... this. Just because like, I just hated the fact that Bill was even in this episode. Mm -hmm. um, just serves no purpose. You could have easily changed her. And Moffat even said in an interview that Bill was not in the original script. So I wonder what was. Exactly. Like, obviously the glass people, I feel like, were always a part of it. But what kind of replaced Bill's role in the episode? Yeah, I, that I'm curious um, about. But then Matt Lucas shows up, and it's just, he's just a joy to watch. Yeah, no, I, you know? I, I love him. He was great. Yeah. He was, and Uncle Party's go, I thought this could, I, I, this could be even un more unhappy. Yeah, it was just, it was, it was a cool moment there. Um... But I didn't mind the cameos. No, you know? they weren't overbearing. Bill, I, I wouldn't have minded Bill if she was just a cameo at the end. Right. Not like, you know, everybody expected all of, all of 12's companions to cameo at the end. Just, it, mm -hmm. it, everybody knew it was going to happen. 
but the fact that Bill was a main event, the fact that she got second billing, the fact that the fact that Moffat even thought she needed to be in this episode. Right. I mean, you could have even just brought her uh brought Bill in from the main glass lady. Yeah, yeah. It was just it was pointless, I felt, but she didn't have to be in the entire episode. Yeah. So um so on to a more positive note, let's talk about the captain as played by Mark Gatiss in this. Okay. Who I loved. Cap- the captain was amazing. Just, he was great. Yeah. And by the way, this is a spoiler review, but if you're watching it because you just want to be spoiled, turn back now. It's too it's too nice of a reveal. Like yeah. not that like it was a big shocker of a reveal. No, no, we guessed it. Yeah. But like the fact that it happened. It was just a nice moment, I felt. Mm-hmm. Of all the forced Brig references in the Moffat era with Kate Stewart and the death of the Brigadier in Series 6 and, and the Cyberman in Series 8, like, out of all of those forced references, this happens, and it's just a nice moment. Mm-hmm. But but out, moving away from, from you know, what clearly put a little, wrapped, a, wrapped the, this character up in a, in a bow, Mark Gatiss just gave a fun enjoyable yeah. performance. No, his performance was really good. I I enjoyed him every second he was on screen. Yeah. Yeah. Um he was he was just fun to watch and I don't know why. He was just And I mean, he was a fleshed out character. He had uh, the the one scene with him and and Bill was was especially enlightening as to what this what the captain is like. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's just a compelling character and then they take you back at the end to uh, to where he had to be returned to in time. And you learn that it's on the Christmas Armistice of 1914, and it's just a beautiful scene. Mm-hmm. It's so it's so nice, and it's such a great way to to end this somber epilogue. It it's so I want to say nuanced, but nuanced is not the right way to describe this. It's no, just it's not the right word. It's nice. Yeah. And I keep going back to that word for some yeah, reason. Yeah, it would be cool, especially with the captain. Yeah, it's just nice to watch for some reason. Um, I I don't know why. It was just well, I it's mean, so enjoyable. I mean, and, and Peter does this Peter thing where he goes, oh, this is the, the Christmas armistice. I've changed when when we landed by a few hours. Yeah, yeah. And he, and he explains it, but it's like, even with that, it's not, it doesn't take the fact away that we're watching these people in this war stop. Yeah, yeah. Two people who are about to kill each other, the captain and, and the, the German soldier. Yeah. They just stop. Yeah, it was it was nice. It was just so fun to watch. Not not fun, just nice. Um, but now onto a more negative note. I added this last minute because I just really wanted to talk about this. What is it? I, I've been calling this the Rusty Sequence. Oh. This... Okay, so the TARDIS lands. Capaldi, Bradley... Uh, Mackie and uh, Gatiss, they all walk out... To a location we never really know the name of. Yeah, I think they say it at some point. I may have just missed it. Um, Capaldi says, okay, uh, Captain and Bill go back inside the TARDIS. First Doctor and Twelfth Doctor share a nice scene. It's a good scene. It is a very it, nice it, It's scene. nice talking, again, as to that somber feel of the whole episode. But then, Capaldi leaves the First Doctor behind, he goes up the tower, and the episode just stops dead in its tracks and says... Here's Rusty from Into the Dalek, for absolutely no reason. Like, like, what is even happening? He's hooked to like, okay, the like, power like, generator. Like, the, like, the, okay, they give him a reason to be in the episode, but the fact that it's Rusty from Into the Dalek was just it, I, again, like I said, it just stops the episode dead in its tracks. I was having such a good time. It was well paced. It was somber. It was like, oh, really good Moffat script. Not too self indulgent. This is where I'm like. Moffat said, "I don't even know what went through Moffat's head. He he threw Rusty in this. He wa- he took he took a few days off. Yeah, and looked at it and went, oh, and, this could be useful. And I'm almost thinking it was a last minute addition because it wasn't even like it was like maybe a month or two, probably two months ago, maybe later in the episode's production. They they were clearly in post at that point." Uh, Nick Briggs said that he was recording for Twice Upon a Time. That's his only role in the episode. Why was it done so late? I don't know. It was like you said. It's probably a late addition, a last. And it's change. pointless too. Like, like it, they made it several points, but I just it, okay, it didn't okay. have to be. Here's rusty. the thing. Here's the thing. If it was last minute, much like Bill didn't necessarily have to be in the script, 
and yeah. wasn't. Yeah. He he already had something kind of in mind that explained that what the, why Rusty was there. Like there had already kind of there had to be something filling that spot already. Yeah. Unless they just needed to fill a time slot, I That's... I don't know. Cuz I was even kind of intrigued up to the point where they brought up cuz they cuz he had the Dalek embryos, he had that nice scene between 12 and 1. But then Rusty appears as this big reveal. And of course, you knew it was going to be a Dalek. You just didn't know if it was going to be a specific Dalek at right. that point. You knew it was going to be a Dalek. It could have been uh, any one of the Daleks. Or it, just, it could have just been a random Dalek. I wouldn't have even minded that. But the fact that they went so far as to say, this is Rusty the Dalek, the good Dalek from Into the Dalek. And then that kind of raises the question as to why he was shooting the Doctor. Yeah, it was just... I, It just... Totally took me out of it. It was like a 10 minute sequence. I don't know, maybe 10 is exactly. It felt like 10 minutes. It was probably closer to five. If, if it was, if it wasn't 10 minutes, then it felt like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. It dragged on because I just wanted to move on from that. And here's a kind of a larger question on top of it. Did what the doctor find out even matter? No. Because it's never brought up. Yeah. So why did that scene happen? I have no damn clue. <laughs> But oh well, let's just move on. So that's what I've been calling the Rusty sequence, and it's just been grating on me since I've watched the episode. But anyway, um, so now, uh, let's talk about the Tenth Planet, which plays a pretty significant role in this episode. It starts um, the episode off. The episode kind of restarts twice. Yeah. Like, like it takes it for, okay, so you see the twice upon a time thing, uh, uh, the Doctor Falls ending. Then you see it from the first Doctor's perspective, from the Tenth Planet onward, and then you have the Gatiss perspective, from the Captain onward. You see that sequence three times, but by far the most interesting is the first Doctor one. Right. Where they even start off the episode with the shot from the Tenth Planet, and the TARDIS, they say previously on Doctor Who, 709 episodes ago. Which was a really nice touch. I liked that. I, I was like... It, it, was, a bit, it was a bit fan wanky, when, but when like, I it, was, it was nice to see. previously on Doctor Who, I was like, oh, are they going to tell it in years? Yeah, but like no, they they literally said seven hundred nine episodes ago, which I liked. Um, it gives you it gave, I'm not sure if that includes the TV movie or not. That's or, just, or if it or if it includes Shada or not. Huh. Something to look into, I guess. I do have to look into that. But anyway, they said seven hundred nine nine episodes ago, and they did like a quick recap of the Tenth Planet, which was cool to see, and then they recreate uh, two scenes from Episode Four of the Tenth Planet, mm -hmm. which is really cool to see. They did the um, old body of mine is wearing a bit thin. Which now adds some context to that scene. They say that his hand is glowing in that scene, which is weird to think of. But I just watched. I, mean, the, I just I just watched the Tenth Planet recently. Okay, but I, I mean, we episode, always have to imagine what, however regeneration looks in the current Who. Yeah, it's how it always looked. Hypothetically. Yeah. Um. Yes, yeah, so you have that, and then, and then they recreate uh, at the end when uh, when Ben lets Polly and the Doctor go, and Doctor says it's far from being all over. Cool scenes to recreate. I like that they specifically chose scenes from. Episode four, four. Yeah, an episode then long, no the, the lost exists. episode, which was cool to see. I like that um, the Doctor left, went to his TARDIS, and then, as we all predicted, that's where Twice Upon a Time takes place, the events of that episode. Oh, right. Um, and then the episode ends. It closes up after the whole whole plot that we just <laughs> ran Yeah, through. that we kind of um, bit by bit went through. Even before the regeneration of, of, of the Twelfth Doctor, the First Doctor leaves, goes into his TARDIS... And, it kind um, of closes back And up. they close back into a box. And I, I before we watched the episode, I kind of said that, like, that'd be cool to see, but it'd be a bit too fan-wanky, you know? It'd be they a, they a, would never do it. They'd never do it. But no, they did it. And yeah, it was totally fan-wanky. And it it didn't even grate on me, though. Like, I was no. just like, that, that was, it was cool to see. Yeah. So they did that. And uh, they box back in. <laughs> and uh, Ben and Polly, they, unfortunately, they don't show Ben and Polly coming back in, which is weird. But it, it's fine, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then they box back in and they show Hartnell regenerating into Troughton. Like, mm. I, I liked that reference. Yeah. I, again, I thought it would be too fan-wanky, I thought it would be too grating, but it worked. No, it, felt. it felt... Surprisingly, it worked. It felt like it fit, at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It fit within the context of the episode I liked. Mm. Um, and before we move on to our last topic, which I think is pretty obvious at this point... Right. Um, could we just agree that this is the best Christmas special? I agree. This is the best, uh, best TV Christmas special. Mm. Um, oh, you're telling me it's better than Feast of Steven? Yes, it's better than Feast of Stephen. Um, 
So now let's talk about the regeneration, the ba- the main event of this of this story. You know, the regeneration so, that matters for the rest of who coming up. So uh, so because we're American and we watch on BBC America, we get commercials, um, or, or or advertisement breaks, whatever you want to call them, um, and uh, and so commercial break came up, and I was like, okay, we're at a certain point in the episode. Three things need to happen yet. We need our obligatory companion cameos. We need a speech, and we need a regeneration. And we came back. We got the cameos. The cameos. <laughs> we got the speech, and we got the regeneration. You specifically called for a five-minute speech. I called for a five-minute speech, and that was accurate too. I don't think so. That was that was accurate. It was under five minutes for sure. No, it wasn't. Let's because like, between what he says at the end to his companions, oh, and what you're he counting wants, the two of them together. Well, then, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. But even then, just in the Tarts alone, I think it's like three minutes. That's definitely a three-minute speech, um, at least. But he goes back in. How, and how did you feel about his speech? It was good. It wasn't super self-indulgent. For me, as someone that like hates the end of era speeches, I didn't mind this surprisingly, because I hate the whole tenant thing. I don't want to go, uh, and I hate. Sorry, I I like the Smith speech. I just hate what it represents. Mm-hmm. Um, because what the Smith speech represents is him saying this is who. I was, and now I have to move on. And not quite as bad as, as what Tennant did. He he just he was just being an arrogant prick about it. But you have uh, you have Smith then, who who is still self indulgent, but still saying he has to move on. And now Capaldi's speech isn't even about himself. He's instructing the new Doctor what they have to do. Yeah, and obviously it doesn't really make any co- any sense in the context of the show. Because it's still the same person. Right. But I mean, it could just be that's what he's going to immediately remember at that point. Yeah. So, I'm not quite sure, like, how I felt about what the speech, or how he did the speech, and what and how it was done in the context of the, of the episode, but I like the fact that it wasn't all about him. No, it wasn't even about him to be, p- period. Yeah, yeah. Like Except didn't... for his last line, where, uh, where he was like, I let you go, doctor, I let you go, or something like that. Um... And then he regenerated. So then Jodie Whittaker shows up. Uh, his wedding ring falls off. Her wedding ring falls off. Um, I like that smoke shot. Yeah. Where, uh, um, where she... I'm going to say this. That my first thought is I love the angles and everything they did. Yeah. And if that carries into the first episode, they better do that the whole way through. I don't want a whole Smith situation about it. As a friend of mine brought up to me. The moment Capaldi regenerates, you could see the tonal shift. Um, and I watched him off at an interview recently. He said that only on a show like Doctor Who will you bring in a whole new production team for the last minute of an, minute of an episode. Which is a funny thing to say, but it's true. Yeah. And yeah, it's a, you could tell it's a whole new production team. Um, the angles of everything, it's shot completely different. Completely different tone. And it's incredibly refreshing immediately after, what, almost an hour and a half I- of... Yeah, every one, of one director st- of one directing style. Yeah, granted, I love Rachel Talele, but yeah. um, it's just incredibly it, it was, it was, refreshing. It was, it was, yeah, it was refreshing to see. And what was also refreshing was the excited look on Jodie Whittaker's face. Mm-hmm. It it was it was interesting, and I liked the fact that I liked that we had that first person shot. Where yeah, she that pulled I liked. The reflection that toward I her liked. Um, with the buttons. Yeah, and she, and she says, "Oh, brilliant!" or whatever, and um. How did you feel about the Aw Brilliant? It's a nice... It's an, It's not a lot. I think it's what we need to hear right now, though. Yeah. I felt that, like, after how grading the life of the 12th doc... I've been using grading a lot in this review. Um, but it's not the... But it is definitely the right word. Yeah. Um, but anyway. But for how intense the life of the 12th Doctor was, you could tell what it was to the 13th Doctor to see herself changed in such a way. Mm-hmm. It's a totally new situation and new personality. It's yeah. going to be very interesting. Yeah, we got uh, we had a quick conversation after we were done watching the episode that uh, that we got like certain vibes from other doctors in that quick scene. At the yeah, end. yeah. Other than the obvious kind of okay, you could say it's like Smith scene in that um, in that you know the TARDIS blew up um, again. But I did like that it was because of regeneration disorientation. Yeah, just pressing it, the wrong just pressing, button. Yeah, just pressing the wrong and button. And the explosion which, looked amazing. Which like, I, I got Davison vibes from in that like in that like she was so disoriented that she just completely screwed it all up. Mm-hmm. You know, 
um, was a, a tenant situation. You, yeah, you all. I also got some tenant vibes from the Aw Brilliant line to begin with. Right. Um, Which I'm not against. If we're gonna get like a, a hybrid of Doctor personalities, I'm not. Against I hope we it. don't. I hope we don't get a hybrid. And also, I liked that. Um, that because she was changed so drastically from Capaldi to to herself, that I got kind of like a, a Colin Baker feel in that. Uh, Colin was excited to be different from the more bland fifth doctor. Yeah. Uh, so a certain, certain vibes from that last scene, which I enjoyed, but it was its own at the same time. Yeah. And I mean, I'll say, cause I, I told you this uh, pretty much when we had that little discussion as well. Initially, one thing didn't click for me in that scene, which was, um, the fact that the first time we see her, it's after the old brilliant line, which again, I, I like that line. I, th- the first time I saw her in Capaldi's outfit, I was like, that does not click right away. And after a few seconds... Well, it doesn't need to. It's not her outfit. Well, right, exactly. But it's like, I don't know, that didn't click right away, and I wasn't sure if it was supposed to or not. I actually kind of like the way she looks in Capaldi's But then after, outfit. like, by the time that whole scene ended, I was like, okay, I'll accept that for an episode. Yeah. I'll take that. Yeah. So, um... Positives? Capaldi, Bradley, Gatiss, Tenth Planet stuff, and the regeneration scene minus some self-indulgent stuff negatives sexist jokes bill rusty sequence and segments of the speech we agree yeah i think that sounds like a fair enough assessment i think you were a bit lighter on the sexist jokes than i was i was was a bit more i'm a little lighter on them yeah um so there was only one that i was like just stop yeah so we both agree seven out of ten correct yes solid episode so, tell us what you think of Twice Upon a Time in the comments below. Do you agree with us? Do you disagree with us? Of course, tell us why. Start the conversation. I'd love that. So, until next time, this has been Joey Morgan. I'm Jacob. Goodbye.